Uh, all right, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to the 172nd monthly meeting of the New York Linux Users Group. Tonight we're going to be hearing from James Turnbull uh, about Logstash. And the title of this is Logstash. Yes, logging can be awesome. Tonight, before we get started, we have three quick requests. One, silence your cell phones. Two, do not use the coffee makers and do not eat in the main room. Uh, both of those things can be really disruptive, the crinkling and the cracking sound, and the uh, coffee makers are a uh, nightmare. Um, and please use the mic for questions so you can be heard and so you'll make it to the recording so people know what you're asking. Um, we'd also like to quickly thank Google for graciously allowing us to use this great space. I'd like to thank our other sponsors, IBM, Canonical, Brand Or Group, and O'Reilly Media for their continued support. In addition, Nylog would not be able to function without our many volunteers who contributed greatly over the years. After the meeting, we encourage folks to join us for more talk and drinks at the Tennis Pub, which is at 250 West 14th Street. We'll have a couple of groups heading over after the meeting, so you don't have to worry about taking down the address. You can just go along with the groups. Uh, we do have a reservation in the back area, and they'll be turning down the music when we go in uh, as a courtesy of us, so we can actually talk to each other there. All right, a few quick announcements. Uh, next month, we'll be hearing from Sam Cotler of Red Hat on DevOps with Puppet and Foreman. Uh, that should be an interesting talk. Um, I hope you all show up. Um, note that in August or September, the regular day for our meeting will be changing from the second Thursday of the month to the third Wednesday of each month. We're not sure which it's going to be right now. So please uh, check the meetup page to keep abreast and to register when uh, we get that all settled out. Our next workshop will be on July 16th. Please find Rob Menes, David Bristow, Hannah, or James Meldrum if you have any questions about the workshops. Now, this announcement is on behalf of Forest Mars and make it today. Uh, starting tomorrow and going through this coming Monday, there will be a major annual Drupal event called NYC Camp. It's free to attend, and there will be a ton of great sessions, courses, and speakers. If you're at all interested in Drupal, you should check it out. It will be at NYU's Kimmel Center in the West Village, and you can register at nyccamp.org. If you have any questions or, or would like more uh, info about Drupal, please talk to Rob Menes. And there are also um, some flyers slash postcards in the back that you can pick up. Um, and uh, don't forget to grab a distro. This is a separate announcement. Don't forget to grab one of the distro DVDs if you're interested in trying out a different distro or your first Linux distro. They're uh, on the table back there, and they're here at every meeting. Um, does anyone in the audience have any announcements? Uh, anything similar? Anything you want to talk about that's upcoming? No, in that case, uh, please hold your questions until the end. And please welcome James, talking about Logstash. Good evening. Um, welcome to Logstash. Yes, logging can be awesome. Uh, I'm James Turnbull. I've worked in operations and engineering for about 20 years now. Um, uh, I currently work for Puppet Labs, and I run um, sort of I, I recently ran technology operations, and recently now I run sort of business development and community and evangelism and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm a very bad Ruby developer um, and an appallingly bad uh, developer in half a dozen other languages that no one uses anymore: Cobol, RPG4, a few others like those. I have a funny accent, you may hear it pick up. Um, this is not so much of a problem in New York; people are used to funny accents, but it is a relatively big problem in the rest of America. And I talk really fast, so if you don't understand something, wave your hand in the air and I will rewind and attempt to say it a little bit more slowly. Um, so uh, I'm an author, I've written a bunch of technology books, uh, you can see a bunch of my very bad code um, and uh, extremely poor puppet code on there. Uh, I pontificate on my blog um, about a bunch of technology and some related topics there too. Um, these are some of the books I've written. Uh, I wrote two books about puppet, a uh, book about learning systems administration. A book about Nagios many, many years ago when Nagios was about the only thing used monitoring and uh, I'm still depressed and miserable about that. So uh, at some day I'll come and talk about Sensu and make people happy. And a book about Linux security many, 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 many years ago when I did my packages. Um, so please don't hold some of the recommendations in that book against me. Um, most recently I've written a book called The Logstash Book. Um, and there's a reason I, I wrote about Logstash and the reason I've talked about it tonight is I think it's a really cool platform and a really cool product. Um, and it's one of, those, uh, one of those sort of tools, I think, that needs something to push it a little bit long and get a bit of acceptance. I've got a bunch of cards at the front here that talk a bit about the book, and we'll give a link to the website and all that sort of stuff, so feel free to grab one. Um, and uh, we're going to do some giveaways of books and stuff, um, and I haven't organized anything for the Logstash book, but I'll say the first three people to email me will get a free copy of the PDF. Um, I think my contact details are on the site. 
Um, so, who are you folks? Uh, anyone here at sysadmin? Anyone here a developer? Anyone here a security person? Anyone here multiple things? DevOps? Well, lots of hands, right? You're all you're on. Anyone here management? Anyone at the wrong event and too embarrassed to leave? <laughs> <laughs> awesome to know. So, what's a log? Um, we all, we, all, we all deal with logs every day. Um, pretty, I, I pretty much don't know a security person, a developer, a sysadmin, even management people who don't see logs at least a couple of times a week, if not multiple times a day. Um, it's the core of a lot of what we do in terms of things like uh, troubleshooting, um, in terms of things like performance management, in terms of things like security. Um, all of these applications and services and tools we manage generate this data. Um, and it comes in a variety of different forms, um, but th at its core, it looks a bit something like this, and I picked on syslog because it's you know, obviously a fairly ubiquitous sort of standard. Um, and this is a, um, I'm really sorry about the system D reference for those of you who probably scarred and burned, but um, uh, essentially it, a log is made up of a timestamp, um, and or, and I'll, I'll talk about timestamps shortly about uh, a variety of different forms that come in. Um, a bit of data, and a timestamp in the data effectively is a log. And, and it comes in a bunch of different formats. So, uh, you know, if you're a Java developer, you're going to recognize that a, a bunch of different logging formats. If you're a, 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 a Linux sysadmin, then, then syslog is going to be fairly ubiquitous for you. If you're going to use uh, platforms like Cisco, um, they have their own flavors of, of syslog, you know, same with companies like Checkpoint and all that sort of stuff. So, this is the sort of, this is the sort of ideal life cycle of a log. And if you read, like, um, what's an example of someone? Someone responsible, an adult like Tom Limitelli, wrote a book about being a sysadmin a logger. And, uh, and it's like, if you do care about logging, this is what happens. You record, um, I have to make sure I'm going to press the right button. You know, you, re you record things from your systems, you transmit them probably to some sort of centralized logging system, and you analyze them, um, you store them for a while, perhaps you want to keep the data, you want audit trails, and then eventually you maybe delete some of this. Um, but realistically, we know that this is actually not true, um, that, that this is like the grown up log cycle, um, and uh, that realistically our log cycle is a bit more like, this, where we have the recording <laughs> part, we have the transmit part, in case this sits on a disk for a while, and then usually we'll get on its face, we're going to delete it. <laughs> and even worse is when there's actually a secret, secret, secret actual life, life cycle <laughs> log, which is comes out of the system. <laughs> so go, Wait! No, I guarantee you, uh, I, I think the first thing I learned as a sysadmin many, many years ago on, on an IBM AS100 system was. Um, that when you ran out of disk on the on the, uh, on the var partition, uh, or the, the AS1 equivalent of that, the first thing you went was a CD into the directory called logs and go rm-fr, enter. Um, and instant problem gone away. Um, of course, we all know that that's not a very responsible thing to do, but unfortunately it's a realistic reflection of what we all do. So, why is it logging awesome? Um, there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, and the, and you know, why, why we're in a situation where this particular log site like so I'll tell you a story, um, and it's a story about, about three, three sets of logs. Um, and these are sort of, sort of, I guess you call them representative examples, um, and they're fairly heavily sort of sysadmin focused. So this is, anyone seen this before, this is, this is a log output from, from Apache or it might be in Nginx, one of the two. Close enough, Apache would say. Um, and you know, it's, it's, there's a fair bit of data there, there's a fair bit of information, there's a, there's a bunch of things we probably care about. Um, and those of you who recognize some horrible things like there's a WordPress site there, uh, also known as a security vulnerability. Um, <laughs> and here's another example. We've got this is our output from, um, from PHP, from PHP and PM. Um, and again, it's, you know, the, the, this is a bunch of relatively important data. Perhaps this warning may be something I care about. There's a fatal error there. Mm. Maybe something I, I want to give a crap about. And here's my favorite example. Those of you who have to deal with the JVM, um, and, and, and I, I will defend the JVM quite strongly. I think the JVM is a wonderful platform. Um, it's occasionally worked on by people who can't write code, also known as Java developers. Um, <laughs> no, no, that's extremely unfair, and I'm, 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 I'm picking on anything target. But notoriously, Java applications are output data in a, in a reasonably, um, we'll call it you know, stack trace, stack trace heaven. I mean, they'll, they'll output a series of tra large trace of track states. And this is, I think this is the closure app that, that died. Um, and you know, it, it's a non-trivial exercise um, to actually find out what the hell has gone wrong with, a, with an application running the JVM. Um, and certainly for traps beyond players are numerous. So all of these have something in common. They've got 
Um, a lot of useful stories, a lot of useful data, they may in fact represent things that are wrong with our environments, our systems, they may represent security vulnerabilities, um, they may represent performance problems. Um, but they're pretty confusing stories, so they're not actually um, all a helpful choice in their current form because unless we know exactly what we're looking at, we, then you know, how do we know what we're, what we're going to get? How do we know what we do with that data? So what's wrong? Um, log formats, there are lots of them. Um, I have yet to meet a developer who does log formats the same way as so others. There are no standards, let's face it. Um, uh, I've yet to meet a sysadmin who, who ha has, you know, has who outputs the error messages for various applications, or um, you know, I, I work on Puppet fairly regularly. We have a uh, we have I guess a seven year old uh, application with a bunch of different um, people who've worked on it, a bunch of different log formats, different words used for different errors. Um, so the, there are, there are huge amounts of things, just not in terms of the parse and the data, but the, the language that you use inside those those sort of things. Um, Timestamps, I really fucking hate timestamps. Um, people keep inventing timestamp formats, and if you go to the, if you go to Wikipedia and look up timestamps, there is a shit ton of timestamp formats. And, and vendors go, yeah, I don't really like ISO, you know, I don't think I'm going to have this one where I want to have the time it was, you know, the Paleolithic era, you know, near the Garden of Eden from the, and date from that point. Um, and I would also like to make sure we count Sumer Sumerian numbers. There are people out there who, who really can't um, set a line of timestamp. I, uh, Microsoft does this a little bit. Um, a checkpoint was notoriously bad at this. Cisco is notoriously bad at this. Different divisions of the same organisation would come up with applications and products that had different timestamps. So you're actually things like uh, those of you who use products like Cisco Mars, which is a log aggregation appliance that Cisco used to sell. Um, it used to have to support like four different formats, all produced by Cisco. So it's really hard to work out when events happen, um, and you know it's very hard if you've got systems in multiple time zones uh, with multiple different timestamps to work out what happened. Um, very few error messages have context. Like you get an error message that says memory overflow. Okay. <laughs> Is that helpful? No. Um, uh, stack, stack trace. And, and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm working on Ruby applications. The output from Ruby stack traces tends to be, um, you know, you, t you tend to have to work like, okay, it's mentioned multiple method calls, it's mentioned multiple lines. I'm mean, going to have to dig through and do a bit of debugging. Um, and often the error that spins out at the end, you know, blah, blah, blah has occurred, you know, blah, blah, um, uh, and Things like no method errors in, in Ruby are a classic example of this where you know, you've obviously called something on, on something, but what and how? Um, you try Googling for that error, you're going to find everybody who's had that generic sort of error. You have to go deep back through the process. Uh, and essentially, this model, the model of, of distributed logging doesn't scale. Like, and, and I think that's where we get to the log cycle of the record and delete, is that we have syslog collectors or we have logging tools on our, on our, on our distributed systems. We have a couple of boxes set up in a data center or in AWS, and we send our logs to them and they sort of pile up. But once we get more than, say, you know, I would say more than like five to ten systems, um, you start to be able to lose context. You start to be able to lose the ability to actually do anything useful for that information. So, um, into Logstash, parsing heavily. Um, I started looking at Logstash a couple of years ago. Um, I, was, uh, I worked for a company that was looking at Splunk, um, and I think Splunk is an awesome tool. I won't say anything bad about Splunk. Except um, when I get an invoice from Splunk, it's a fairly substantial number that I got. Um, and I worked in a bank, so I, like I was, I, even though I had stick shock, and we, we spent lots of money on lots of things, um, not even useful things most of the time. Um, that's what your fees pay for. Uh, so I, I thought lo Logstash, is, the, Logstash is like it's 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 not quite it's not quite there with Splunk, but and you'll see you'll see probably some of the limitations we talked through us. But it, it's a pretty cool example of this sort of slogging world. Let me tell you a bit about Logstash. So Logstash is the whole log life cycle. So it has, um, it has a collection agent. Um, it has a, a native collection agent that, that runs. Um, it's not awesome um, because it's, uh, it's, it's written in JRuby and it runs in the JVM. Um, so it's, it's a fairly heavy tool um, at, at natively. But um, Jordan Sissel, who wrote it, uh, has also got some other tools. One of them is called Lumberjack that's uh, written in C and part of Go. And it's a very lightweight log collector. Or you can use things like Syslog. Um, or you can, you know, anything can generally watch a file and shoot data at, you know, a Logstash will see. It's free and open source. Um, it's primarily written by Jordan Sissel. Um, Jordan's famous for a couple of things. Um, one is he very famously said he writes software out of hate. Um, and uh, he's not kidding. He's a really lovely guy, but he really does hate software. Um, and he hates a lot of the things he has to work on. And he's like, I'm going to write things that will make the hate dissipate. Um, and I work for a guy named Luke Kniez, some of you may know, um, Luke has, a, has a, had a similar approach to configuration management. He was like, I hate all software, I'm going to write software that's nicer. 
Um, but for a very you know, hateful sort of sort of uh, development life cycle, he does have a maxim, which is if a user user has a bad time, it's a five year milestone. And this is a really important thing that I, I sort of like to emphasize the fact that the Logstash community is really friendly and it's filled with people who go, if you have trouble getting started with Logstash, we do not tell you to RTFM. We actually say, you know, well, what's your problem? Let's help you out. Oh, wow, those docs suck. We should write some more of that. Or well, that error message sucks, we should fix that. And Jordan is, um, I don't know when Jordan sleeps, um, he's like one and a half children and I'm not really sure when he gets any actual rest, but he's really available. There's a bunch of us on the Logstash channel, always happy to help out. And as a result, the tool's kind of awesome. So let's dig into a bit into its architecture. I mentioned before that you have a bunch of things that ship things um, in various different forms. Um, you have an optional broker. Um, this could be something like Rabbit or Redis. And essentially, it's, a, it's like a, a buffer. We use it like a broker or a buffer. And it basically pops in there. All of the logs get sort of stored in there and then, and then forwarded onto Logstash's main process, which is an indexer. And essentially, the indexer takes log entries um, and it takes them in a variety of different formats and then parses them into what's effectively structured data. Um, then we have the search and storage box, um, which is effectively um, under the covers is Elasticsearch. Um, and, you, and those of you who haven't used Elasticsearch, I strongly recommend it will make search considerably easier. Those of you who had to put up with things like solar, Elasticsearch is like solar with sunlight, um, <laughs> and rainbows and unicorns. Um, and there's a very cool web interface called Kaban, which we'll see a few slides from before. Um, but the core of what, what we're talking about here is here's our. Here's our um, uh, Apache log um, in its current form. Um, and we have three sort of, we have four, oh, sorry, you know, three sort of stages of life that a, lo a, a log entry comes through. We have this concept of an input, and this is essentially, here we're just watching a file. We're just watching an access log file. And you have lots of these. This is using the, the, the native agent. You can see the syslog, use a bunch of other things. Um, and then, we have a filter, and this is a, a filter is things like it turns data from one thing into another. And this one is called rock, and we'll see what rock does shortly. Uh, we have another filter, it's called date, and it does it basically does date normalization. Um, and lastly, we have an output. And this is a working, simple um, log stats configuration in 15 inch lines that will parse Apache um, logs. And what do we get as a result? So we have the input, takes in turns this thing into this thing. Now, this looks like it's a pain in the ass. Uh, this looks very much like JSON too, for those of you who are familiar with it, it is JSON-esque. Um, it tells you where the log came from, and it tells you if there's any tags on it, any fields, and we'll talk a little bit about tags and fields. Gives you a timestamp, tells you the host it came from, path to the file, gives you the message, and then the type. We saw the type earlier, it's like, it's like you know, some new tag that says this is a web. Um, so it still looks like a bit of a mess, but it's a structured mess. So you can actually do things with it now. So it's actually effectively structured out. And I personally believe that a bunch of text files floating around with, with, with random bits of, uh, of data in them are not as good as structured data. Filters. So this is where things start to get a little bit more exciting. So here we have, it's a type, again, we're going to do in our web type. We have a pattern here, and I'll talk a little bit about patterns and rock. Um, Patterns and Rock use, use regex, um, and uh, those of us who spend a lot of time um, buried in logs, and uh, uh, I think most sysadmins would do some sort of um, some sort of regex style processing, turning one type of data into another. I'm surprised by the fact that a lot of sysadmins are actually better regular expression developers than, than actual developers, um, because they tend to do more of it. Um, you, you watch sysadmins do some amazing things with set and all. Um, frightening things, but, but, but amazing things. Um, and this essentially adds, we use regex to add context. So this is a this is a regex. Does anyone know what this regex does? You are... <laughs> Email address? Yes, it is. Um, this is a real regex that pulled out of a production system. Um, uh, I, I was horrified too. It goes on. Like you can see that here's my scroll bar. This is just the first page. Um, yeah. So Grok hides a lot of this for you. Rock's job is basically to say, I have some pre-prepared regexes. You don't have to write any regexes in shop, you can, um, but I've got a bunch of pre-prepared regexes that translate things. So Rock basically says, here's a timestamp, and it has a, a syntax, which is like, this is the, it goes and looks up this regex, and it says, that's a timestamp. I've labeled a timestamp. This is a host name, this is a syslog program, this is a bit of data, um, and it, it takes care of all those details for you. So, and 
log session is inherently very extensible. You can add your own regular reg reg expressions. You've got ones you use already for log recognition. You just drop them in there and they're recognized. But it comes with a huge library of additional um, regular expressions. So the syslog timeout, again, this is, it, it's, it's broken into, into pieces. So you can actually use these chunks elsewhere. So it has a separate regex for month, month, day, and time. And it rolls up into this timestamp, which it ultimately rolls up into the, into the sort of, you know, look out for a syslog entry. Um, as a result, you can combine and merge and build uh, a bunch of things that you would otherwise have to manually write regular expressions for. So that's what the host name, again, that, that really simple the syslog prog. Yeah. So remember we had our, our, our somewhat messy thing. So we've now taken this and we run it through Rock and it becomes this. Now, we've still got a bunch of these fields that are similar to similar, but look at these fields, these fields in the middle here. It's split out the client IP, uh, ident auth, the timestamp, the verb, the request, um, the request path, the HTTP version, the response, the bytes, the referrer, and the agent. Now, those of you who have to deal with, um, with like, troubleshooting any sort of web-based problem, you will automatically have a bunch of data you can actually use with nothing more than just the, just the, the one filter, out of the box, 15 lines of code. Um, and we'll talk a bit more how we can query some of that data, but essentially, um, this, this is a, it's gone from being a, a, a message in a text file to being a structured bit of data that we can actually do useful things with now. So there's over 100 patterns. Um, it does numbers, strings, host network addresses, URLs. You can change patterns together. It's easy to extend. You add your own patterns. It's easy to test. You test your patterns. There's a thing online called Rock Debug where you can string together patterns and provide it with data. And you can even write your own test for your patterns. And I hope you all write tests because even if you're sysadmins, not just developers, even security people, you should write tests for, for the infrastructure, and patterns are easy to write tests for. They're like, if I see this log entry, you know, validate that my actual log session since we'll pick it up, we'll parse it right, and we'll do a little reply. So you don't mention time. Um, so I mentioned before we had a, a date filter. The problem is, so I'm going to in time formats, seriously stop adding time formats. I keep saying that again and again and again, because it drives me up the wall. Um, solution, standardize with the time filter. So, um, the time filter basically says, I recognize a bunch of different time formats. So I, 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 you can say, here's a bunch of incoming time formats. I would like you to, to set those time formats into this format. And so you have, by the time the data goes through Logstash, every one of your log entries has the one format. Filters, there are about 30 plus filters. Um, I think when I wrote this, there were 30 plus filters. I think it's close to 40 now. Um, Munge, mangle, mutate, look up, research, aggregate, things like DNS resolution, uh, convert data from one form to another, um, mutate think that things like change uh, change words into different things. You can standardize phrasing, error messages. Um, you can do all sorts of geographical lookups. Um, you name it, there are, there are a bunch of filters on the website that, that are an absolutely incredible collection of stuff. Uh, if you ever have to anonymize data for anyone, Logstash comes with an anonymizing tool that strips out a bunch of things you can tell. Uh, I, I know works, anyone who works in security has probably had to provide anonymized logs. Anyone who works in any sort of environment where you, you care about audit and compliance, you have to produce an anonymized data, Logstash does it automatically, which is incredibly simple, simply, simpler than having to go through and say, find all of the SSNs, all the credit card numbers, and things like that. Filters turn abstract information into things like this. This is another example where I've taken the, 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 the data I had before, thrown it into graphite, I now have graphs that show me um, the, my response codes, uh, the verbs that we used, um, the paths, a whole bunch of other things, and I have instant instant metrics on a bunch of web services. That took me, I don't know, 20 minutes, I guess, um, when I first started looking at Logstash. Um, and Graphite, and anyone, yeah, anyone, Graphite works out of the box most of the time, use public, use share, build it easy to build. Um, and this sort of stuff, um, you go from going, I have no insight into my environment and my tooling, to actually having some reasonably clear idea with a very, very small investment. Truth will set you free, or it should at least wake you up. Um, and so we get to outputs. Outputs are, are how, 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 uh, how logs that sends things to places. Um, the output we specified is Elasticsearch. Those of you who never use Elasticsearch, it's a very, very simple search engine. Um, essentially, it, 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 um, I say very simple because um, a, lot of, a lot of search stuff is reasonably complicated. It has a really easy to understand API. It's easy to query data out of. Um, it's easy to, to, to cluster. Uh, I was at a Monitorama in Boston a couple of months ago and somebody gave an Elasticsearch demo and they ran up an, an, their Elasticsearch cluster running on the laptop with a couple of cluster machines. 
they used the default cluster name, and there are about four or five people in the audience who also had Elasticsearch clusters running with the default cluster name, they all joined and formed a cluster. I, 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 I challenge you to find another tool that clusters automatically and does it a, a, in, in such a really a reasonably elegant sort of way that you can be giving a presentation and, it's, and it builds a cluster. Those of us have to do with HA stuff, normally this is non trivial exercise to make. Elasticsearch is incredibly easy to scale, incredibly, incredibly easy to make resilient. Um, and comes with a bunch of really easy, simple tools and plugins to manage that stuff too. There are 50 plus outputs. Um, you can do things like uh, send search. Uh, those of us who need to keep things for compliance or logging, you can store stuff. Uh, you can send it to other systems. Uh, if you want to use something like Graylog2 or something like that, it's very easy to output that in the right format. You can do emailing, IRC, alerts, Twitter, um, graphing, aggr aggregation, um, you can execute. Um, binary commands based on log entries, um, you can send Nagios alerts, uh, you name it, you can do up, you can do it, I said 50 plus things. Um, I do a lot of metrics and graphing out of Logstash and it's incredibly easy. So, um, these are some Elasticsearch, um, this, this, so this is the, uh, an example of the Kibana web interface. Um, these are all of the, the pretty parts. Um, this is a, um, I think, yeah, this is also an Apache uh, this stuff works generally out of the box. Like, I, like it took me about five minutes to set this up, um, and you know, I, I was, you know, I was reasonably, uh, I, I was reasonably happy with the results. And, and they keep developing the it's It was, um, was a PHP app, then a Ruby app, and now it's largely HTML5, and it's, um, it's under heavy development, um, and it's a really cool little tool. Um, this is another good example where they've done some geographical stuff. Um, and they're tracking um, Twitter data. So, uh, one of the inputs that, that, uh, that um, Logstash can do is suck in Twitter data. So if you're marketing folks like Twitter data, and they want to get a dashboard, and, and you don't want to pay for it, it's a relatively simple way of doing something like that. Um, and it also scales really easily. So I mentioned before, there's a shipper. Um, brokers, uh, in this case Redis. Um, you have multiple brokers, you can tell the shipper to send to multiple places, or to, to do failover. Um, and then you have multiple indexes, um, and so on and so forth. And the Elastic Search scales really well too. Um, and that, um, uh, in terms of in terms of uh, performance, um, the indexes it said it, it's written in JRuby. It runs on the J JVM. Um, if you know how to tune the JVM, it's relatively simple to manage. Um, I believe um, Jordan, whose day job is working at DreamHost, is there. I think his official title is Guru of Logs or Czar of Logs or something like that. Um, they process some ridiculous number of log entries at, 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 at an hour. Um, I think he quoted me something like five million events a second or something like that. Um, they do it on 12 boxes um, and, and a bunch of, and, yeah. so that, I think that's a pretty incredible example. And uh, Elastic, Elasticsearch is also really good at, at being able to do things like, um, you know, throw away the data after a certain period of time, you know, keep, keep the set of data, remove this other set of data. It's, it's very much designed like that sort of scaling. Um, if you want to do all the tools on there, it's also really a nice API. So, um, all of this is, is available at logstash.net. There's a user group here, um, which is uh, a fairly active mailing list, um, very friendly people. As I said, the, the Freenet IRC channel, um, I come across a bunch of people there, um, from, you know, mostly from sort of recently large organizations who have scaling problems or issues getting started. There's a, a lot of people there who have quite good advice. This is the ticket tracker. Um, Logstash is currently version 1.113, I think. Um, there's a new release called 1.2 coming out fairly shortly. One of the things in that you saw earlier, the structured data I showed you, looks a bit like a JSON hash. Um, that structured data is going to be massively simplified, um, and uh, it'll, it'll be much, much easier to use and manipulate. Um, there's also going to be a bunch of things added to the configuration language to make it, um, to make it easy to do conditionals and a bunch of other things um, that I'm going to think is going to make Logstash particularly awesome. And part of that will also ship with the new Kibana, which is the sort of new web interface I showed you out of the box. Um, and as a result, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a pretty awesome sort of tool. Um, it's not quite apps to the same as Plunk yet. It's not quite as, as pretty as that yet. Um, I think it's very closely on its tail. Um, and it has developed in a slightly different direction. It is very much a tool for, for sysadmins and developers who are doing hands-on sort of things. Um, I thoroughly recommend taking a look at it. Um, and questions, thank you very much.
for the common plane expands. So if you can tag um, essentially every, every time every time you you perform a sort of action in, in, in Logstash, you can tag the things. You can say all of these incoming events I'm going to tag with the host name, uh, their Apache, um, and they belong to this application stack. And you can add and remove tags as part of any of those events, like a filter you saw drop or date. You could say you can mark it as like all of these all of these events have been date stamped. You can say or have been processed from the timestamp. Things like that. Um, and it allows you when you when you get that data into Elasticsearch, all of those tags are available. So I can say I would like to see all of the all of the events for this particular application stack for the last 24 hours, um, and then it will give you a standardised version of all of those events for the last 24 hours you know, from that application stack. And that might be from every component in the stack, you know, web, but database, middleware, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Sorry. Is that a configuration? Uh, it is when, when you're parsing it. So you say the like add tag, and you can say add the tag. So you might want to grab some data out of the message, or you might want to grab the host name, or a bunch of other sort of things. It's a, there's it relatively easy and flexible way to do that. And, well, sorry, one more question. Sure. Uh, yeah, type. Uh, what other types are there? Um, type is just a it's just a, it's just a marker. It's like I I, I you, you specify that type as a type. Um, it's not, a, it's not a specific, it's not a list, it's just what do you call it. I can call it a type of patch or it's, it's just a, um, you get, it's sort of, it's example of when you perform operations, so I want to say, I want that grok operation to only happen on type web. So it knows that that grok thing, because it doesn't try to read an entry thing, it only tries to read an Apache one, or run, you know, it doesn't try to read a MySQL log or something like that. Okay. Uh, if I uh, wanted to write uh, a, a new alert for the you know, system in my organization, well, is, does all the development have to be in JRuby? Um, so, from the output point of view, like if, if you want to, if you want to send it to something new, like a new system, um, then yes, you have to write that in that Ruby. The plugins are really simple to write. They're like a hundred lines of code on, and they're very, you can very easily come to So, like if you were, like if, say there wasn't a PageDuty plugin, you could do as a PageDuty output. If you want to write a new alert, like match this particular thing, that's all in the log, log stash configuration language, and that's so that's you would just create another, you, you create a. a uh, another sort of output filter to say page you find this particular thing and learn on it and send it through. I think in the future though, um, we'll see a lot more of that um, the web interface being able to build the sort of alerts out of the out of the box there. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I don't know how well that was, it'll scale to do all of that sort of individual alerting inside Logstash. Um, but um, I do a lot of things like uh, so a stack trace from Java is a good example. I say I can do I can do things that says put, put, put all of the log messages for this particular stack trace together. Um, as so we have there's a there's a filter called multi-line, takes the thing multi-line events and puts them together, and then mail that to the particular application developer. So if, so they, they they want to know about every time it, the the, um, the Tomcat box stack traces, they get a, they get an email for one of those. Um, that's, that's the sort of the thing you can do. It's relatively simple. Three lines of code in the in, in the in the log stack configuration, not in JRuby. That's just the configuration stuff. So, um, you, Thank you. you gave an example of a long stash output into graphite. Are you breaking up that data with other filters before you throw it, before you pass it to graphite? Only the filter you just saw. Mm -hmm. So the filter you saw back there, which had that combined Apache log thing, mm -hmm. that's the only filtering I was doing. Um, and uh, it'll, it'll, you know, it will um, just with that, that that's easy. Because I mean, graphite, if you, you feed graphite anything, it'll create a graph for you. Um, and, and that sort of data is perfect for that sort of stuff. So, is there a plugin? Uh, sorry, is there an output filter? There is an output. output yeah. um, there's, there's two outputs actually. There's one that outputs the graphite, and there's another one that's called metrics. And metrics effectively constructs your own custom metrics, and you can send them wherever you like from, from, uh, from there. Thanks. Yeah. I don't care. Whoever would like to pop on here, we'll pop back to I'm interested in having uh, a seasonal replacement that will buffer the data if the remote server goes down. Yep. Um, so uh, this works with syslog, so you, you can, you can send question. syslog data. Um, so the question was, um, do, does this replace syslog? Um, and, and, and so the answer is yes and no. Um, you can use Logstash with syslog, so you can use our syslog or something like that and shoot the events. And, and, and Logstash will listen, well, it actually has a built-in syslog listener. 
and it also is down to some syslog events. I found that our, our syslog at large scale doesn't actually scale all that well. Um, and you're right, if you, you know, if you're using this be okay, if you're using UB, start drop packets. Um, I don't like things that drop log packets. I think that's kind of like, I, I had this little integrity thing I'm keen on, keen on. Um, but uh, Logstash also, you can also use the Logstash agent itself on a system. It's a bit heavyweight. Um, there's also a tool called Lumberjack, which is a, a, a log shipper. And essentially that's a, it's a written C, it's really small, and basically what it does is it monitors, um, it monitors files and, and, and it has um, built-in TLS SSL, um, it does some buffering, um, it, it, sort of, it also down wait and queue, and um, it's reasonably smart about that if it gets to the point where it's about to drop the machine, you know, it, it throws away data, and, and, but generally speaking it's reasonably solid. Um, the other thing about that is that Logstash's architecture is that broker I mentioned in the middle there, which could be Redis or Rabbit or something like that, um, that provides you another buffer layer, so like you can have those on separate machines, um, and you can say at, the, at your local data center that they get buffered into the Redis um, environment until it queues up you know, to the point, and if you can't get hold of the Logstash machine, you know, you're just they're buffering, and then once the Logstash machine gets back up again, it'll shoot everything to buffer out to Logstash. So there's a bunch of really flexible things you can't do with the system. Actually, in fact, you can't do with most log management tools. I have uh, two short questions. One is, uh, we'll work with uh, Scribe. Can we use Scribe to ship logs here? Yes, I believe there is a Scribe output. Um, I'd have to check, but I, I believe there is a Scribe output. If not, I would Google for Logstash and Scribe, because I'm pretty sure I've talked to someone who uses both. Um, and um, uh, for the output storage, um, uh, if, if I just say store the logs um, to a file, how does it do uh, library, to live rotation? How does it break the files? It, is there, it, it, it S3, so S3 yeah, there is an S3 plugin. Um, it doesn't do Logstash doesn't do the log management of the stored data. Once it's once it's there, that's your problem to take care of. Um, I think the S3 one might have some some archiving things, but I'm not sure. If not, it'd be relatively easy to extend it to do that. Um, like you know, I, I'm writing a new file, something I'm going to turn over. It, it certainly does things like you know, it'll it'll do the log rotation to like a daily thing or a weekly thing or monthly, whatever that happens to be. Um, but it won't do things like archiving and deleting it. But you can reasonably, reasonably easily build that for a web service. S3 gives you some Yeah. Or Glacier or something like that for simple service. Um, how does Logstash relate to Redlock? Where do they fit in each other? Um, they're very similar tools. Um, there's, a, there's a reasonable overlap. Um, I think. I, I, I haven't used Greylog enough to, to make an adequate comparison. Um, I, I can repeat that. Greylog doesn't scale nearly as well because it's concentrated on one system and unfortunately it seems to have one container that hasn't been very active in the last year. So it, it has a couple of other bad behaviors with regards to buffering data and letting itself die if you really pummel it with a lot of logs. So unfortunately I like it a lot, but I've got to stop using it. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. So I think that's a that's an architecture. So I think here's an example. So I like to do lots of filtering close to the edge of my environment. Um, I, I'm not interested in sending data that I don't care about to my central log servers. The more I can discard closer to the outside, the better. Um, I could do that with a Logstash agent. I could run it locally on a system, have it filter, do an initial filter, and just pass in the events I care about and drop all of the other stuff. Um, I could do the same thing with a little bit more work with syslog, um, uh, but. You know, I guess that I guess that's the primary the primary difference. It was the oh, yeah. and purple shirt. Does the uh, message broker interface support other things besides Redis and uh, Rabbit? Can you do the Amazon SQS? There is an Amazon SQS support. Um, uh, I don't know. So. 
being an open source project, some of the levels of maturity of some of the plugins might be differing. Like the Rabbit one just went through a significant rewrite. I wouldn't have recommended even use it for now. Um, uh, Redis obviously lacks any security because the Redis developer refuses to believe security's problem. Um, did, did I sound big ago? Um, but yes, there is an SQS plugin. Um, I believe it's actually reasonably well maintained. I think the guys at well, I want to say I want to say the guys at Delta Sport, um, uh, one of the cloud management platforms, John Vincent works. I think he wrote that. Um, you can have a look on the website. It will tell you whether plugins or plugins have a status like beta or experimental or something like that. Um, so, similar question for Elasticsearch. And I'll second to your endorsement of Elasticsearch and good food. Uh, but is this product tightly coupled to Elasticsearch, or could you use Solar if you so choose, or some other? Um, the output, how you output, the Elasticsearch is just so that um, uh, Elasticsearch is just one of the outputs. Um, you, you would be able to write a solar output, but it might be a little bit, you might have to munch data in a little bit of it, but, but generally speaking, it should be fine. Um, all the web interface stuff, though, is, is hard coded towards. It's actually, the new Kibana interface is written by a guy who works for the Elasticsearch company. Um, so that's very much the web interface stuff, it's very much focused on Elasticsearch. And I don't see anyone developing it. Uh, excellent talk, thank you, James. Um, if I want to set up like the most basic log stash infrastructure, like what would you recommend just to like kind of get started playing with it? Um, I wrote this excellent book. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, sorry, light self interest aside. On the log stash site, there is actually a, a introduction to log stash thing, and it steps you through like. Um, uh, you can basically run Logstash interactively and steps you through like three or four different sort of things you can have. Um, it takes about 10 minutes to run through um, uh, reasonably trivial. Logstash comes as an omnibus like package, so it ships, it ships with JRuby, it ships all the various plugins you need, lots of stuff. You download one jar file and run that, um, and, and that's, that's all you need to do. Elasticsearch is very similar, very easy to install. So just run up a, a VM or, a, or an AWS box and, and run through the, 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 the how, to, how to steps. Um, it does a lot of output to stand it out, so you actually see what you know. You can see what's happening, and you can see what changes, and it's with their message and stuff like that. Another question over here. Yeah, uh, there is a lot of old log files, for example, we have around um, multiple TVs of log files, which are stored in central storage. And I like to index, index all those uh, and take what are the second out of those. So what I tried this video was uh, I was just trying log files today, uh, just before the presentation. And I tried the SSHFS because our system is so rigid, you can't install anything, you can't touch anything much. So uh, with the SSHFS, I got into to around 50 Mbps. So, uh, but I was trying the file plugin, but file plugin only indexes indexes the or filters the new events that come into the log. It doesn't. Uh, Index the old events which are already there. Yeah. So, what is the solution for this, or is there a better way to do this? Um, there isn't a really elegant solution. Uh, the question is, is, is uh, the, the file plugin, which monitors files, it basically monitors for a point in time. It does keep track of where it is in a, a file, so it starts again. Um, you can um, you can blow away the thing that tells it where to go start in the file. Um, so it should it should actually start at the so it should start at the top again and, and go down. You can actually force it to that behavior. If not, you can just push the, I mean, cap the file to another file and, you know, under ugly things, persist admins, ugly things are reasonably elegant. <laughs> um, we use Splunk extensively uh, for research, like, uh, for, like emergencies and uh, everyday problems. Uh, how does it compare search language to, to, to Splunk and differences with Splunk? So that's probably the Logstash's biggest weakness compared to Splunk is that Splunk does should provide you that amazing sort of you know, tag all this data, write the, write the query on the fly and have it dynamically build the, the data stack. The Kibana tool that has been built um, is on the way towards doing that, but it's not quite there yet. Um, and the query language in Splunk is considerably more powerful. So if you're doing, I know a couple of companies use Splunk for e-fraud detection, like they build fraud detection walls in Splunk. You probably couldn't do that in Logstash quite yet. Um, not too far off though, I'd say it's 6 to 12 months um, and, and, and that we sort of stuff we can do. Um, as with all open source projects, if you're keen, patch is welcome. And it's certainly cheaper than Respond, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for more questions. Does anyone have any other questions? What's the email address? <laughs> uh, 
sorry, grab a card. Uh, it has the site on it and uh, and and talks about the book. Um, and uh, yeah, shoot me an email and, and I, I will be obviously fair and the first three ones come through. I saw. I see two more questions. One hundred, one back there. Yes, can you also connect to these log such data such as the CPU utilization and this usage of the forces? Um, yes, um, so I mentioned before there's a, a, a filter called metrics. Um, if you're feeding that sort of data to Logstash, you can actually say to the metrics thing, um, this is a metric, grab this data and build a, build a metric out of it. So CPU utilization equals X time, at the time period and then spit that metric out some way. Um, so yes. Um, a lot of it's, the, the metrics thing was really designed around stuff like um, you're trying to instrument an application and you know that, that, that in order to do you know, you're using um, uh, using something that, that, that spits out log entries as instrumentation. Um, you can actually create metrics from that. So you can say it's the transaction flow. So like uh, new transaction, new transaction, new transaction, and, and then create a metric from that saying, oh, transaction per hour is you know, 433 hours. Hey, um, if, if you have an existing environment with a centralized syslog server, could you just plug Elasticsearch and uh, log right into your syslog server, or would you feed that over, or how would that go? Um, the couple of times I've seen this done, um, people have done it, uh, uh, taken, say they've got existing syslog collectors, they just add in the right address and start shooting that to Logstash, run it in parallel, it looks like happy they've got it right, and then turn off the other. <coughs> just log environment. Once they're happy that they've got it, you can easily just do a drop and replace. I mean, as I said, uh, Logstash will pretend to be a syslog collector, um, and it's reasonably it's probably better than a lot of syslog collectors in the sense that it actually can deal with different formats of, of syslog. So you can actually mutate the data, say it's like a Cisco's version of syslog, then it'll, it'll turn data into things that make sense, and you will even read Windows event logs and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, drop drop replacement works. Parallel works. And I'm just curious uh, in, in larger installations of this or whatever you've seen, like what what tends to when you need to scale, what tend, what do you find tends to be the bottleneck? Is it like network I/O or is it just CPU like regex, doing all these regexes or what do you like? Where do you find where where do you find the, the need to scale comes from? Um, it depends how intensive you're doing. If you if you have a bunch of regexes and filters, yes, you'll you start to see um, you know, lots of that relatively thread safe, but it's not necessarily you know. It, it, um, there are a few things in there that you'll start to see I/O start to start to go up, you start to see memory start to get consumed. I mean, it is a JVM that will consume it. Once they do more operations, it will start breaking more memory. Um, network stuff, unless you're doing lots and lots and lots of um, uh, you know logging, um, you know, that, that I generally don't see a huge amount of that. Um, I always tell people that if you're going to do logging data, then this is why you have separate NICs in machines. Like you know, don't don't run your log data out of production production NIC. Um, you know, run 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 it run it back channel. So the environment for your logging or for your backups or whatever it's to be. Um, I think organizations with huge volumes of data, um, yeah, you can certainly overwhelm switch or something like that without too much trouble. Um, but that's the same as this one or anything else like that. Um, <coughs> I, I would have said that the yeah, Logstash itself probably first, um, then Elasticsearch, um, the, you see the events start to skew up as they try and try and try to write Elasticsearch. And that's the indication you probably need to add some machines that pass for a tune a bit. Um, and then probably then I seem to recall the documentations and the recommendations in the past were along the lines of make sure not to add, like, you want to tune your configuration to the system it's going to be on because the more uh, the more configuration sessions that you have, the more threads will be created and the more activity will right. be. Yes. Yeah. Um, so every filter will create a thread, and, and therefore, you know, the more filters you have, the more threads. <laughs> So you mentioned about being able to input metrics into Logstash. Is there any sort of solution to sort of RRD those down? I know it doesn't do a lot of the, uh, data management on the back, but... You could, I mean, uh, you could output to, to something that, that um, you could probably write a plugin to do that. Um, I, I would say there's a bunch of Ruby libraries for RRD. You could probably write a plugin that does that without too much trouble. Um, in fact, if you looked at the existing metrics plugin and thought that to do that, I would suspect you probably have 80% of the code you need there. Well, doesn't Graph that also have a uh, 
an RRD writer? Yeah, it does. Graphite does. Uh, you mentioned the matrix plugin and so on. Um, but yes, Graphite does some of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I thoroughly recommend Graphite, so it's the most cool. Um, I'm just curious, when you're writing logs, do you see any value of uh, writing the data in like a key value pair? Um, and would log stash automatically extract that for you? Um, what I see. So I, I guess I do, um, and log stash can be top trained to like this is log format and just say recognize it. Um, uh, pop, you know, key value. Um, you can construct um, fields and, and with more advanced stuff that used to be arrays and hashes and stuff like that. So you can actually do some of that sort of stuff. Um, uh, yes, I think it has value. Um, again, you know, it depends whether it's worth creating a log format. You may, you know, you may not be, you may not be the most popular person in the world when, when the rest of the team goes, you know, what's the log format, what's the work, and, and um, I, I, I tend to think the syslog format's not bad. It has its problems, but it's not bad, um, and, and some of the generic like that. Um, I'm a big believer in um, things that have reference numbers, like you know, table or log messages with a, you know, this is error message one two three four ABC, and have a lookup table somewhere, or, or, or this thing, um, what's called documentation. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think that's actually a relatively useful way to write an application. Uh, this error message actually means this thing, go and look it up, and here's an, here's an FAQ entry that explains how you fix it. Um, I think those things are relatively useful in wiki pages and stuff like that. There's something right at the back of the handout. Was it? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, how do you that? Are you aware of the origins of the word grok? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> well, I think I think on that we've exhausted the questions and answers section of today. Why don't we get on to the trivia? Um, apparently, I, I, I had to write some trivia questions to give away a book. Well, um, books, plural. So what we books, have is uh, three ebook vouchers uh, from Ohio uh, and two physical books. What we're going to do is, when you ask the question, whoever thinks they have the answer, please put your hand up. I will try to, to go for the first person I see as fair as I can. Please don't shout out the answer because that's led to some hurt feelings in the past. So I'll, I'll talk really slowly. Um, this is like, wow, this is like, uh, like, like the, the bad time I played to people's shoes. Um, so, what other piece of colorfully named software is Logstash's author, Jordan Sissel, also the creator of? I saw your hand up first. FBM. FBM, which is a. Uh, <coughs> package manager. Um, Would you like a voucher or a book? Yeah, what well, one? You want me to keep going? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. Uh, what is the maximum of the log stash project? That, that <laughs> I think you're the user has a hard time with the bug. If the user has a hard time with log stash, it's a bug. Yeah. <coughs> um, what are the three types of plugins in log stash? Yep. Uh, who played the sixth incarnation of Doctor Who? Colin Baker. After the last time, we said we weren't going to allow organizers to do this anymore. All right. Well, let me rephrase the question. Who played the fifth incarnation? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a uh, first person starts here. Anyone? Okay. Yeah. Tom Baker. Yes. Wait. No, Tom Baker. No, no, no. no, 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 no. That was the pro that was six. Five was um. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yes. Well, come on up. That's right. Can you say the answer again? Peter Davidson. Peter Davidson. Um, who wrote the new Logstash dashboard called Kibana? Uh, you already won one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rashid Khan. Um, and there's only one book left, and I'm not going to throw it in until it's killed. Anyway, 
And uh, as I said, there's uh, some cards up here about the Lost Ash book. Please grab one of the first three people whose emails I get. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get a free PDF. Anyone else want to pay for it? Please do pay for it. Pay for it. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Much appreciate your appearance. So we're going to be clearing out this room. We're not in a big rush, but uh, sometimes around 730 we have a reservation or at McKenna's at, again, uh, 250 West 14th Street. We'll all be going out and waiting for you. All right. All right. And this, this